All right, let's have our ushers come forward at this time. Are uh, you ready to receive the uh, or, or sow your offerings and tithes? Because we're ready to receive, and uh, this is a spiritual thing. When you start receiving the revelation of what this is, there's a lot of teachings going around, with, you know, people saying different things, you know, like the tithe doesn't matter now, it's Old Testament. Uh, actually, the tithe started with Abraham. Actually, the principle of the tithe started in the garden when God set this whole thing up. There was a tree there, he said, don't touch it. And uh, it had the principle of the tithe where we don't touch the tithe. Then Abraham is where it all started in, uh, in an actual format. After he uh, gained victory over the kings that had taken his stuff, uh, he met Melchizedek. You can read about Melchizedek in Hebrew chapter 7, tying it back into the New Testament. Uh, but this all comes together and the blessings flow in this. But I want uh, there, to say this, is there's blessings that are associated with the tithe. There are blessings that are associated with the offering. You should know what they are. Maybe I'll start doing a little pop quizzes. Tell me the blessings that are associated with the tithe. Put you on the spot. Uh, uh, it's Adam Malachi. Okay, we got some people talking about it. Good. And the blessings that are with the offering. Okay. <laughs> There's a pause there. We've got some coming now. But you should know them. Because as we sow... And as we are honorable, we should be expecting everything God said to manifest. But uh, the verse I want to read is I want to read uh, how to get over or how to overcome inflation. You know, you know the Bible talks about inflation? It doesn't use the word inflation, but it's the same type thing. Your money is going down. That's why things are more expensive. Most people think that prices are going up, but really what it is is your money is going down. Now, what's the difference? If your dollar becomes worth less, it affects your whole life. If eggs go up in price, it affects your eggs. So, so because it's, we're in an inflationary time, and how inflation works is that your money is becoming worth less and less and less, your whole life, there's, there's a gap being drawn in your whole life. And churches are talking about right now about how they're struggling in their finances. Why? Because families, they're in this, this quagmire of life where they're, they're, what money they have coming in is becoming worth less and less and less. And your, uh, if you're a renter, your landlord has control over the pricing of your rent. Your grocery store has the pr pr uh, control of the pricing of your groceries. Has anybody noticed their gas bills gone up? Because you're subject to a utility company, Edison, gas company, you know, whoever it is, uh, Cal Water, or whoever it is. They've got control over this, but you, most people's income is coming from a single source, their job. They say that inflation is like 8 9%. Well, if something costs $2 and inflation's at 10%, it would now cost $2.20. Is that what happened to your eggs? No, they're not at what, 50% at least, somewhere in there? If gas is $3 a gallon and it goes up uh, 20% or eight or 10%, that would mean it would go up to $3.30 a gallon. Is that what happened? So inflation is actually at a higher level than what they're telling you. And they're, the way that they keep those numbers down is they eliminate certain items. They don't calculate that in. And, uh, and so by not calculating that in, it makes the variables in the math equation work better in their favor. But now you and I, where we're living, in fact, I read a, uh, uh, an article on uh, just in California that to be basic middle class now, you have to make six figures, like over $100,000. If you're under 100000 you know, family income, if you're under 100000 you're really going behind very quickly. Okay, but now we, we've got to pause here because God said that he would supply all our need. So now is there a need? I'm not talking wants, and a lot of people have a hard time distinguishing between needs and wants. But, uh, but do you need to keep up with your rising prices? Yeah, because your, your basic living standard, God wants to reveal himself through you. You going poorer does not reveal his glory, his power, or his splendor. He needs you and I to rise faster 
than the inflation. He's willing to do that. I mean, his word through there that you having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. If you're in a status quo in an inflationary time and your income's not going up or you're not beating the inflation, you're going down. You don't have all sufficiency in all things and you definitely can't abound to every good work. I'm going to show you how to beat inflation. It's not going to make sense to you. In fact, it might irritate you. Because it, it does not make sense up here. Now, I, I heard Pastor Harbaugh say something this morning that really impacted me. And uh, he just gave an, uh, they had just said tongues of interpretation. And he says, if, if you're rationalizing what I'm saying or saying that just pastor said, you're in the first step of uh, deception. He said, because what I'm saying right now is coming from the spirit, not from the brain. And, and it made me start thinking, and it made me start wondering, can you separate David from Pastor David? Because David has opinions. Y'all know that. Hey, I don't need encouragement on that one. Okay. So I might talk to you about budgeting, which is David. But then I might talk to you about stewardship, which is Pastor David, because that's coming out of the Bible. The, uh, there's stewardship, the handling well of your money, but it, the Bible doesn't talk about budgeting. Budgeting is a, is a natural way of doing the math to, to keep your, your budget on track. So th this is actually a very hard thing for a lot of people. They can't, they can't decipher what's coming from the spirit and what's coming from the natural because I'm just a man. I'm a natural man with the gift of God in me. And there's times when I'm speaking to you that, that I'm speaking from the Spirit. Now, I'm not one to go around saying, thus saith the Lord, because uh, I don't want to take his name in vain if I'm wrong. I'm very cautious on that. But, but can you decipher the word that's coming from David versus the word that's coming from the Spirit? Now, you might say, yeah, every time you preach, I know it's David because I don't agree with that. Well, did I deviate from the word? And yes, if I deviate from the word, it is me. But if I'm in the word, you better listen. So I'm going to tell you how to do this. In Genesis chapter, chapter 26, God gives us a story. We've read it before. You're familiar with the story. And there was a famine in the land. Now, we're in a famine right now. The famine is not a drought. We, I think we got over the drought, right? I mean, if, if we didn't get over the drought, man, we're getting over the drought. This rain is, you know, the flooding that's going on and stuff like that. But there's a famine, a lack of. So in the, the context of this verse, the famine is a lack of food. They're in, a, in a, a water drought. Crops are not growing. They're in a famine. But right now we're in an economic famine because your money is drying up. You have to understand your money is dry, dried up. If your heart is connected to the dollar bills in your pocket, you've got your heart connected to the wrong thing. There's a famine right now, and through inflation and taxation, uh, in fact, I think uh, Dr. Barkley even uh, mentioned that, that part of the Marxist theology is to attack the middle class by, through taxes and inflation. This is far bigger than you and I sitting here. But you've got to realize we serve a God that's bigger than everything. And in the God that's bigger than everything, he has set up a system by which we can overcome. Because remember in Ephesians, he said that when Christ was raised from the dead and he names all these names, the princes, the powers, the, the mites and all these things in the world. And then he says he seated at the right hand of, of the father above all these names. Inflation is a name. And then in chapter two, verse six, he said he seated us in him, which is above all these names. Also, there is a way we can we can operate above this there was a famine um, in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of abraham and isaac went unto abimelech king of the philistines of Gerar. so isaac's idea was i'm going to go to the world the philistines were not in covenant with god i, I i'm going to go over here because there's money over there don't chase money don't run there are a lot of people leaving california because of money and because of politics there's a lot of Christian people leaving California because of money and because of politics. God can overcome the money, and he needs people here to overcome the darkness. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. This is another principle that I keep, I try to pound it. You need to be where God wants you, not where you want. That talks about your church. I mean, I'll even say, if God's telling you to go to another church, 
God's saying it, not just because you're irritated because of the way my presentation or something like that. But if you really know, you should not be in this church. You need to be where God tells you to be. Not because you like the music better or you like this program better or something. If God is telling you, you need to be where God is. I guarantee you there's a lot of people that God's telling them to be here, but they don't want to be here because of this, that, or the other. Your supply is where God tells you. Or you're going to chase the world. So in this land, and I will be with thee, watch this, in this land of famine, I will be with you, I will bless you, contextually throughout the Bible, bless is empowered to succeed, to overcome, uh, to, to prosper. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. God says, I will do what I said. We have to believe that he will do what he said. And I will make thy seed multiply as the stars of heaven, and I will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Watch this. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice, kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. We have to do what he said. Now I'm telling you how to overcome inflation. Verse uh, 12. Then Isaac sowed in the land. Now, I'm going to insert into there. I'm going to add, but it's contextually correct with those first verses. And Isaac sowed in the land of famine. I'll tell you how to overcome inflation. Sow your way out of it. Pastor, you don't understand, man. I'm barely making it right now. Sow your way out of it. As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not end. You have to sow your way out of it. If you try to budget your way out of it, oh, man, you're, you're goofed up because you don't have the power to overcome the, the Federal Reserve and, and the different economic powers that be that's, that's putting these uh, things, the taxations that they come up with. I think I said it in my live stream that uh, if, they, if they tax you between taxes and inflation, if it eats up 90% of your income, God can bless you enough that 10% you can still sort of, uh, have all sufficiency in all things and abound to every good work. J.C. Penney showed it. He lived off 10% of his income, and he lived very well. He sowed the 90%. He tithed, and he sowed the 90%. Now, that was a product of his decision, or maybe God dealt with his heart. I don't remember him saying that. But he sow, his sowing took him beyond anything else he could imagine. And Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. The Lord blessed him, the same thing that, that God told Abraham that he would do. The man waxed great in the time of famine and went forward in the time of famine and grew in the time of famine until he became very great for he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds during the time of famine, a hundredfold return and a great store of servants and the Philistines or those without the covenant of God envied him. Now, if you go back into the book of Malachi, uh, Ralph has read this several times. He says, they shall call you a delightsome land. God's system is set up so that when people look at you and me, we're living above what everybody else is living in. And they're going to say, you're blessed. How are you able to do this in this time? This is not something you try. This is something you do. Well, I tried that for three weeks and nothing happened. Oh, you don't know what has started happening. You don't know. Now, you might not have seen the manifestation in three weeks, but heaven started moving on your word because heaven watches to see who will do his word. And God says, my word will not return to me void. It shall accomplish in the thing that is sent. Let's stand. Don't get discouraged about inflation. Don't get your fixation on your job. I'm not telling you to quit your job, but don't get your fixation on your job. That I, I, I've got to get a job to make money. No, actually, if you shift your, your mindset into the Bible that we work so we have to give, what, put 40 hours a week so I got something? Change your face right now. What, I got to work 40 hours a week so that I can give it away? God said, take no thought. Seek first my way of doing things, the kingdom of God, and all these things that people chase, I'll give them to you. Now, I'm not telling you to give away everything that you make. I'm telling you to operate in the principles of the the, the the word of God, because in the principles of the word of God, you can beat inflation, you can eat, uh, beat taxation. You can beat everything that comes against you. You don't have to be distraught. 
discouraged. Uh, don't answer me or, or shake your head or drop your head when I say this. But if you are perplexed and you are worried and you are anxious about money, get over it. God's got a way over this. And it's not you working your finger to the bone. But God wants us to flourish. God wants us to be blessed. God wants us to walk in his provision. But you have to, like the, the, the verse that, that Peter read, John 10, 10, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Most people can't see when the thief comes. You just think about it in the natural. The thief does not come to your house and break in by knocking on your front door and saying, hey, I'm the thief. I'm here to take your stuff. Would you let me in? He doesn't do that. He watches you, knows when you're not home, goes around the back, comes in stealthily so that the neighbors don't see him, gets what he wants, sneaks away. When did they come in? That's what the, that's what the enemy does. If, if you're of this mindset, oh, it can't happen to me, you're setting yourself up for disaster. He's out to kill, steal, and destroy. I like what Dr. Barclay said one time. He says you can't only do the good. Because us faith Christians, we speak and proclaim the promises, right? He says you can't only do the good. You have to bind the bad also. you you got to stand against the enemy, which I, I talked about on the Wednesday before. I'm going to pick it up on this Wednesday. How to resist. And the power of resisting the devil, you've got to resist and you've got to proclaim. Don't, don't think you're living in a bubble. This, this world will contaminate you. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity once again to bring your tithe and our offerings to this altar. Lord, we're not in a fundraising cycle here. Lord, we're believing you.